Thank you for joining us for the Into Me I See podcast, brought to you by RPI Consultants. I am your host, Justin Braun. This is the podcast where we connect to answer a simple and compelling question. How can we work to improve professional health, performance, vitality, and outcomes by focusing on the quality of our relationships? Today on the show, we meet Jennifer Hunt. Jennifer has over 20 years of experience working in higher education and healthcare. Like a few of our guests here on the show, Jennifer was introduced to RPI through the Real Colors organization. RPI implemented Real Colors in December of 2021. It is a temperament assessment tool that helps teams communicate and collaborate more effectively by understanding both our individual and group temperaments. We talk Real Colors all the time here at RPI, and we're really happy to share that practice with Jennifer and with all of you. Jennifer is blue on the Real Color spectrum, which means she's all about empathy, relationships, and interpersonal connections, which is perfect for our show. Jennifer's career has thrived in the space between the business of healthcare and the mission of healthcare, which of course is all about taking care of people. Jennifer currently serves as the director of the Gerald J. McShane Physician Leadership Academy for OSF Healthcare in Peoria, Illinois. Jennifer is also a certified ICF leadership coach, and we'll hear today about how the coaching mindset permeates almost everything she does, both in terms of being a leader as well as becoming a better leader. She presents often as a keynote speaker at various conferences covering healthcare leadership topics. The topic for our show today is that coaching relationship, coming to understand that leadership is an inside job. She talks about the value of having a coach, the value of being a coach, and that sometimes the gift of giving or receiving coaching is a matter of the client's readiness to invest their heart and mind in the process. When the student is ready, the teacher appears. She also shares insights of how succession management programs that she has built over the years at OSF Healthcare have supported their organization in terms of long-term health and sustainability. And you'll hear a little bit about how coaching is, is part of that. So developing the next generation of leaders at OSF Healthcare relies on the coaching mindset. And Jennifer's uniquely positioned within that organization to lead a team and cultivate those relationships, both with the clients that they serve and also empowering those recipients of coaching to pass that gift on in their leadership roles throughout their entire organization. It's a really exciting topic. I give you Jennifer Hunt. Jennifer, we're really grateful to have you on the show today. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be with you today. For sure. It's been a joy getting to know you. Um, tell, the, tell the audience a little bit about your professional journey, Jennifer, including your current role and why you're passionate about what you do. Sure. So again, thank you for having me here to share. Um, currently, as uh, you heard in my introduction just a couple minutes ago, I'm the director for the Physician Leadership Academy at OSF Healthcare, and we are a faith-based Catholic healthcare organization located in Peoria, Illinois. So really my role and scope of what I do um, is to help our physicians and advanced practice providers enter into our organization. So from onboarding through executive development, I have the opportunity to help them to learn to grow professionally and really help to be alongside them on their career path. So your team is nested within the, the overall physician management segment of OSF Healthcare and, and your focus is on learning and development? Yes, yeah, so our focus from the team perspective, I'm going to lead a team, of, a small but mighty team, I always say, of four other professionals and really centered around leadership development and growth. Um, and so our physicians you know, are trained clinically in the roles that they serve in when they enter in for patient care. Uh, and then we help them to transition sometimes even from that clinical space and the clinical bedside day to day into more of a formal leadership role. Now, we also have them yeah. in an informal leadership role as well. 
Um, mm -hmm. And so that's really the responsibility of what our entire department does. Well, we've got a great topic to talk about today, leadership being an inside job. Um, very interested to hear more about the Physician Leadership Academy and your work there. Uh, but once our guests introduce themselves, we like to invite you to offer a reflection that captures really the essence of what you want to talk about today. Well, this is very exciting to share uh, the reflection with you because, as I shared, we're a faith-based, um, we're actually a Catholic healthcare organization. And so to have the opportunity to um, share a passage from scripture uh, is a joy for me. So um, I'd like to share with you today Galatians 6, 9. And that particular um, passage is, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. And I think that really encompasses uh, exactly what we do in healthcare to serve our patients. Uh, but in addition, it's what I do every day to grow our physician leadership talent is really to help them to not get discouraged in moving forward in their professional growth and development. And um, so that passage, I think, and for all of us, um, and each of us has a particular meaning probably, um, but for me, that's what um, it really speaks to uh, with regard to the work that I do. And it goes right alongside, um, if I can just share with you as well, just kind of what our team does and our, our team's mission statement, which is developing our organization while simultaneously developing our talent. So again, that passage from scripture is right in line with the mission that we have as a department, um, which in turn uh, is also in line with our organizational mission here at OSF. And so um, it's always a proud moment to get to share our mission, which is serving with the greatest care and love in a community that celebrates the gift of life. Um, and we live our mission every day with every patient and in all that we do. So it's both patient care as well as caring for each other as an employee or in our terms, we use the word mission partner. That's beautiful, Jennifer, great starting point. Um, and what an exciting value add that your team offers you know, to your captive audience of all the physicians and advanced practice providers at OSF Healthcare, being able to reach them. And, you know, you think of all the work and time and money and effort that goes into getting these advanced degrees and this high level of education to be a medical doctor or an MD, PhD, or a specialist in a radiology field or whatever. And, um, the fact that your team's able to help them continue on a growth path is really, I think, exciting. Uh, for all the members of your team and the patients that they serve. You know, I also heard you say that that leadership is hard work and, and I can relate to that too. <laughs> it requires resiliency. Uh, and as your topic reminds us, it requires a lot of self-work, right? It requires some introspection. Um, it's an inside job. So really the quality of our leadership in relationship to our peers and to our patients or customers and really to all we serve is intimately connected to really owning and cultivating a growth orientation for ourselves and others. And I feel like your, your reflections really captured that. Um, so talk to me a little bit, Jennifer, when you talk about coaching, there's, there's this coaching mindset or this growth mindset. Why is coachability such an important consideration for your physicians and advanced practice providers? How does it pertain to improving professional health performance and outcomes for the OSF healthcare system specifically. So as you were just mentioning, Justin, you're talking a little bit about resilience and coaching relates to resilience. Um, coaching is one of the things that through the academy, I mentioned a little bit overarching what we do from onboarding through then executive development, but coaching is also one of those types of learnings that uh, we offer in the academy and i use the that phraseology very specifically type of learnings because coaching is something that can be taught from the ability to actually gain the skills to be a coach but then is also an opportunity to be coached so you may um, be in a position where you need a coach and 
each one of us can benefit from having a coach. That's where the coachability comes in. So there's the ability to be coached. There's also the ability to actually be a coach and develop the skills. And so through the work that we do um, in the academy, uh, I have the opportunity to do both, which is very, very exciting. And so um, coaching is not about discipline. So I wanted to talk uh, a little bit about that and around how we serve with coaching as both a learning offering and then actually being coached. Should that be something that would be of value and benefit to that physician advanced practice provider or leader, depending on um, what their role is within the organization. And so as you think about it, um, coaching is really coming alongside someone. And if you're getting coached and you're being coached and say, put your hand up in there and say, I need a coach. It's really to help you get to where you're wanting to go to a goal, to achieve that goal faster than perhaps you would get there on your own. And there's a difference between disciplinary coaching and then coaching for mm -hmm. what we would call development or for our own well-being to get ourselves into accomplishing what we've set forth for ourselves. You know, um, perhaps it's you're starting the new year. And as we know, when we start a new year, each one of us probably has a particular goal we want to achieve. And then at the end of the year, we also take a look and say, did we achieve that goal? Um, and that's what coaching can help you to do throughout the entirety of a year. So very similar to how we might think of it um, in um, the start of any type of resolution, even if we think of it from that standpoint at the beginning of the year. But um, as we think about the difference between disciplinary coaching and then also just coaching truly to be that best version of ourselves, I think that distinction needs to be in our mind because, mm. yes, in the professional world, we have disciplinary coaching that might have to exist just to help someone to achieve a particular outcome that we're looking to achieve for the organization. But in as we talk about coaching for our own well-being and our own development, um, what we're talking about and speaking to there is being to achieve being able to achieve the outcomes that we've set forth for ourselves. And you know, as in my particular role in the organization that I'm, I'm privileged to lead and be a part of here at OSF, you know, we really touch with our coaching around 1,200 physicians and advanced practice providers. Should they be in the space that they would want to be coached, right? So the coach, the coachability comes in. There's a time and a place, and we have to be ready to be to be coached. So not everybody's ready, um, and you as an individual know that timing for yourself and the space in which um, coaching might be of value to you and might be a benefit for you to continue to grow and develop. Excellent. <clears throat> That's a large population, 1,200 folks that your team is in some way connecting to, coaching, supporting. Um, <clears throat> I heard you talk about a lot of things, Jennifer. I heard you talk about coaching as a skill I heard you talk about the ability to receive coaching as, as a separate skill. Um, and, and something else I heard uh, or in, in what you were sharing about the distinction between uh, coaching in a, in a, it's probably not the right word, but in a punitive sense, like you've done something wrong, let's, let's help you grow so that you don't do that again, versus really unlocking and, and helping a leader bring their best self to their leadership role. And I think that's the, one of the distinctions that I understand between, you know, RPI is a consulting company and we maintain consulting relationships where we're coming in as an external voice to an organization to give them some leadership or advice or best practices. Um, and that relationship is, is amazing and unique and exceptional. The coaching relationship isn't so much about bringing external advice to your client. But it, it, when you were talking about it, it almost sounds like you're, you're more interested in unlocking the gold that's already inside each client and helping them manifest their best self. Did I get that? Absolutely, Justin. That's spot on is what I would say. You know, coaching is about, um, the coach doesn't have the answers. The coach is there to really help 
for self-discovery and to help that particular client, if you will, um, really think about things perhaps in a different way. Ask the questions to do the deeper dive into thinking about maybe a solution problem or even goal in a, in a different way. And coaching is an ongoing relationship. And so um, that is part of really the uh, secret sauce, if you will, to mm-hmm. coaching. It's having that ongoing coach and client relationship. And it, it could extend over you know, years. It could be um, even just a couple months. It just also depends on throughout the conversations, what the client would like to get out of that particular coaching relationship, and then how the coach can benefit the client um, and what the longevity of that particular relationship would need to look like. Yeah, I heard you talk about accountability partnerships being a a key component of the coach-client relationship, because we all know that we're much more likely to follow through on a, on a goal that we set for ourselves. If we have a relationship and a connection to another, another person that's helping us maintain accountability. Yes, absolutely. I think that's a, the heart of coaching. That's why you would seek out a coach that goes back to coachability. So you have to be in the mindset um, as a client, if you will, that wants to get to receive coaching to be okay with someone holding you accountable. And that's really the coach's role is Mm -hmm. to hold that client accountable to doing what um, they say they're going to do. Now, the client may also say, well, I I don't want to do that. And the coach has to then help that client to say, okay, well, what's next to that, right? Open that discussion up with those very deep, and we call them in the, in the coaching industry, powerful questions. And they're questions of inquiry and questions to help that client to dive really into more probably self-discernment around what they're trying to achieve. Yeah. In, into Me I See is the name of the podcast. And, and it's it's about a relationship and it's also about self-knowledge. Sometimes the, the ultimate expression of intimacy is understanding what we're seeing in the mirror of our relationships. And, and I, I'm hearing what you're saying about the coaching relationship being a very special place, very safe place that you create for your clients. Um, again, you're, you're coaching leaders within, the, within your healthcare organization. I mean, when I, when I go to the hospital, when I go to the doctor, I'm going to see the doctor uh, and that's the population that you're working with. But uh, in, in an effort to make that appointment, I might pick up the phone and talk to a receptionist that schedules that appointment. I show up and there's a reception team. You know, maybe there's a nursing team. I mean, there's a whole team around that team of leaders that you're coaching. Can you talk a little bit about how the impact you're having on that tip of the spear in your healthcare organization, how does that impact flow all the way through to your patients and the patient care that you're providing? Sure, I'd be happy to share a little bit about that. So as we think about coaching and the reason that we um, have the ability to coach and we are concentrating on our physicians and advanced practice providers, as you just shared, they really are um, the heart of what we do. And it's um, through them and being the leaders of those teams within the healthcare organization they are helping to coach and guide that entire team. So just as you were sharing, Justin, around, you know, as a patient, we maybe have a couple layers that we have to get to to actually see perhaps our provider, our physician or advanced practice provider. Throughout that entire journey of that patient, the physician is, or the APP is the the leader of that particular group. And so they're coaching along the way. They're asking questions to their entire care team and they're seen as a leader by that care team. And they're looking to that leader and that as coach to help them to also um, be able at the end of the day to provide the best patient care that they possibly can. And so um, the concentration for our organization and the outcome really is by starting with that physician or advanced practice provider that is seen as that leader 
either in a formal title or an informal title, because many times not every physician or every advanced practice provider is necessarily formally titled a leader, uh, but they are seen as a leader informally mm -hmm. by that entire care team. So starting there and helping to coach them and help them to develop then either through them developing the skills themselves and going through training or just experiencing coaching, they have a sense of this is what I need to also be doing for the care team that I'm leading. And so that's the, the ultimate outcome that we're looking at um, at our organization um, and just to help them as well to also maybe ask some of those coaching questions to their patients um, because coaching is a different mindset and it really again puts um, I shared this a, a few yeah. moments ago it puts it back into the space of asking those inquiry questions and that's a lot of what our physicians do is ask those inquiry questions to the patient you know we've all been a probably a patient uh, in the past. And we probably hear those questions in our mind right now. And a lot of those are inquiry and self-discovery, which is very similar to coaching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see how that would flow through to your patients and help them take more agency in their own health and wellness, ultimately, just by having that type of relationship with their physician. That's really cool. Um, Thank you, Jennifer. Is there anything else you wanted to share on, on the outcomes for your organization? I think, you know, at the end of the day, the outcomes um, around coaching, that's a very isolated example of what I just shared around translating down to the patient. Um, but coaching is alive in our organization, along with other uh, learning programs themselves to really help our organization at the end of the day, achieve our mission. Our mission is to serve each patient with the greatest care and love and to attract that talent and to retain that talent that can help us to do that um, mm -hmm. to the best of our ability. Yeah, I hear that. So like retention of physicians is an important strategic advantage for OSF Healthcare. And it sounds like the service you're bringing and that differentiator is helping, helping your organization thrive long term. Awesome. Yes. So Jennifer, the last two years you've presented at the National Vizient Conference about your work on the executive physician development. Uh, super impressive. Can you tell us a little bit about how you design your programs and service offerings in the Physician Leadership Academy to empower your organization to reap the harvest of excellent leadership? Tell us a little bit about how you're structured. So uh, a little bit about um, kind of conceptually, and I think the important question that you asked in there is, you know, how do we structure this and how do we decide uh, what we're going to, to offer from that standpoint in the academy? It's all tied strategically to really our organizational objectives, outcomes, and then underneath our um, comprehensive strategy. So the Physician Leadership Academy itself sits inside the physician enterprise at our organization, and that's um, very intentional. And that's really so that strategically we're working with our physicians, we're working with our advanced practice providers to help to achieve the organizational outcomes, objectives, and goals that have been set. And so um, as um, so that's strategically the overarching way that um, we really define the work itself. And then through the academy, um, we take that overall comprehensive strategy for the organization and say, okay, these are now the priorities that we're going to work on um, to help to achieve that strategy, just as any organization does. So as we design uh, through the academy itself and take a look at what should we offer to help our physicians um, really lead to the best of their ability, but also grow and develop professionally. Um, that goes back to really having the opportunity to serve them from when they first come into this organization through onboarding and helping to give them the skills, abilities, competencies they need to start and be set up for success at the organization to deliver patient care. And that continues to flow then through executive leadership development. So throughout their entirety of their career, they may identify maybe at year two as an example, I'd like to be a leader 
okay, well, what's that going to take formally to be a leader? And we help to identify that talent and then grow that talent through executive development uh, training, which is a deeper really dive into what does it take to run operations? What does it take to define strategy and et cetera, other things that we would see in executive um, leadership development. But I think the importance of the academy and the, the tie to our organizational strategy is that remembering leadership is not always by title, right? Our physicians are seen as leaders from the moment they walk in the door. They're leading that care team. I spoke to that a few moments ago uh, when I was sharing a little bit more about the why and being coachable and how that's connected throughout the pipeline. And so from day one, we have the ability to really engage every physician and advanced practice provider, orient them to the organization and focus on you know, who we are, our culture, our mission, uh, with the ultimate goal of continuing to help them on that career pathing and journey to retain them um, and to have them be with our organization for hopefully what would be a significant period um, of their career. Uh, and so, and mm. really, the coaching mindset helps us to do that as well. And so, um, I, and again, that goes back to, as we think about um, even development of learning programs and offerings, how does coaching even work inside of those um, learning programs from onboarding to executive development um, to help that particular individual achieve what they're trying um, to accomplish in their career, or maybe perhaps even, um, it, it might be something such as, um, you know, personally that they're trying to to achieve to obtain. Maybe it's even another degree or maybe it's, you know, anything along those lines, I would say, um, from yeah, it's, personal it's achievement. Guided. It's guided by the client, right? right? I mean, it, it sounds like you take a very holistic approach and, and just like a consulting firm, we need to meet our clients where they are. As a, as a coach, you need to meet your clients where they are and you know, whatever area of their life is presenting as, as an obstacle to their growth, that's on the table in a coaching relationship, right? Yes, yes, definitely meeting. Um, that's the, the heart of coaching, Justin, yeah. is meeting that client where they are. And the same would be true with my leaders. We're meeting them where they are. And I heard you talk about alignment a little bit, Jennifer, and it kind of ties back to your team's mission statement, right? Like, uh, developing our organization while simultaneously developing our talent. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. So Jennifer, you've designed award-winning executive succession programs for OSF healthcare. Can you tell us about the parameters of a best in class succession management program and what you'd recommend other leaders consider as they contemplate continuity in their key leadership positions? Does the coaching mindset play into that as well? Uh, so I'd be happy to share a little bit about um, some of um, what goes into the design and development of those. Um, and then I think the coaching mindset, um, I'm going to start with that because um, the coaching um, mindset itself relates um, comprehensively to actually being part of learning and growing and developing as an individual. And so coaching runs simultaneously through all of the leadership development programs that I've ever created. So I'll start there first, but I'll that, so that is really core and I think has to be an element when you design um, a succession management program for an organization. Um, but I think, you know, the thing that has made uh, the, the learning programs around executive development successful um, in the work that I've done has really been that it combines both the academic rigor that exists within uh, the industry, um, you know, combines academics, I would say, with industry rigor uh, from that standpoint. Uh, it also includes, you know, different types of assess assessments that would have to happen. So those could be um, 360s where you're really taking a look uh, at the leader from very different perspectives. So it's the individual perspective. It could be from 
their leader's perspective as well as peers um, in other assessments that I use. And one that I think uh, is critical to design for an exec program uh, is a temperament type of assessment. Um, real colors is one. Uh, we talked about blue, I'm um, myself being blue, uh, but real colors is, is a temperament assessment that I have used um, with in the development of my executive development programs. I know there's others in the industry as well, but that um, seems to really marry very nicely with talking about the other 360 assessments. So you can utilize the temperament assessment along with perhaps leadership styles, um, climate, other types of assessments that would be out there from that standpoint. So just two key things so far uh, that I think would um, really make a succession program uh, best in class. In addition to that, it always has to be aligned with what the organization is trying to achieve. What are the goals, the strategies uh, of the organization? And for me, success has looked like the programs being, and from a learning program perspective, cohort-based, in person, uh, so that there is the human connection back to other individuals. And so one of the key components um, in a learning program that exists over more than just an episodic event is the ability to connect individuals and network them back together. And so I think that too has what's has been le has led to the success of some of the programs that I've been a part of. And in addition to that, with any program, you have to have a feedback loop that needs to go back to the executive team. And so being able to then gather um, information that the, which is tied back to the strategy and the why you're even ha have designed an executive development program to begin with for an organization is to be able to tie it back to, this is what we're trying to achieve. This is the talent we need to have in place for the organization. This is the pipeline that needs to exist in order to keep the organization viable and help us to grow our talent to take over um, for the next generation, right? So um, organizations grow and change. And so we have to have the talent in line to be able to continue to move an organization forward. So um, I think, you know, I covered a lot there, Justin, around what I, what, uh, I think are some of the best in class um, mm -hmm. parts of what have made uh, the programs that I've helped to design successful and I think would be um, the same probably for many um, exec development programs should that be something that an organization would be looking to achieve. Yeah, I think so too. Thanks for sharing those experiences, Jennifer. <clears throat> I like what you said about including temperament assessments, both for the individual so they can experience that self-learning but also doing it in a cohort or in a community where they can connect that understanding of temperament to others that they're interacting with, either in a, in a manager relationship or a peer relationship or a supervisor type of relationship, understanding your own temperament and, you know, the, the strengths uh, and values and needs and joys around that, you know, your unique view of the world and then understanding that there are differences and opening the door to, to that level of inclusion around temperament and understanding how to relate to others, bringing that all into a cohort, into a relationship-based learning and development, and ultimately succession management and alignment strategy is, again, very holistic and, and beautiful. I appreciate you sharing that. I'm sure a lot of our listeners will get a lot out of that. Thank you. And congratulations. Thank <laughs> on you. Your awards. Um, <laughs> Um, so we've talked a lot about coaching, uh, both as a, as a relationship, as a skill. Um, and, you know, like sometimes on the path to mastery, right, is, is learning how to be a teacher. Um, so you, you coach coaches at OSF Healthcare. You, you, you cultivate and you're growing a team of coaches that are serving your physicians. Um, can you talk a little bit about that journey, including, um, you know, what are the credentials around coaching? Uh, how, do you, how do you structure your organization to be able to offer that? Where are you on that journey for not only providing the value of coaching and everything we've talked about, but also developing and, and anointing a, a larger team of coaches to, 
to work with that formal coaching relationship within your organization? Happy to share a little bit about the journey that we've been on for uh, coaching within the organization. And I was sharing a little bit as I was talking about the best in class that um, coaching runs alongside that. And so we have to be have the talent to actually do the coaching. So I'll start first with some of the credentialing and what it takes to develop uh, the coaching skills should you want to become a coach. And um, I am an ICF. Um, certified credentialed coach. And so that's really, that's the International Coaching Federation. That's the really the gold standard, if you will, for credentialing bodies for coaching itself. So that includes, um, one of the things I mentioned was around the academic rigor, as well as the industry um, that has to exist um, with that knowledge together. And so the ICF really provides that. So internally, um, so as we were trying to scale coaching within our organization to have it be part of ongoing learning and development, one of the things that we found is that to become a coach with that rigor takes a, a significant amount of time. And so um, many times, um, you have to be doing both the coaching and then also developing the talent pool that can can also be the coaches. And so that's what we do try to do within our organization. So internally, uh, we also run uh, a program that helps to build, we call it coaching excellence, but the intent of it is to do exactly that, to build the coaching skill set of leaders or perhaps physicians or someone that would be interested in uh, becoming a coach, and that's aligned directly with those ICF standards. Uh, and that is purposeful because we want to make sure that our internal coaches have the same skills and ability to coach as if we were looking out into the industry itself to bring in a vendor or to utilize an ICF credentialed coach. Now, that internal build within our organization, the intent is to get to a place where the learning program can actually become credentialed underneath some of those standards within ICF. There's a process that you can go through um, to do that and accomplish that. So that's what we're working towards, but there's a time element, just as there's a time element to being coached and that relationship can exist for a period of time. Similarly, um, to actually building up that, um, the, the pool and having been ready to actually go for uh, credentialing itself. And so that's the journey we're on mm -hmm. uh, through our organization. We do also utilize um, other vendors to provide that level of coaching support at that ICF level should we um, need that uh, for um, physicians or advanced practice providers. And we have a network um, within our organization that actually hold those uh, industry standard credentials as well, and do a majority of the mm. coaching for our physicians and advanced practice providers. Oh, that's awesome. That, that was kind of my follow-up question. Has, has anyone kind of come into the Physician Leadership Academy as a, as a client and just been so inspired and infected and like, you know, passionate about what they received that they make that turn and now they're, now they're on the giving end of the coaching gift? Has that has that occurred within your team? Yes, that has occurred. Uh, if I can share, I'll just tell a story about that. And so one of the first um, offerings that we had through the Physician Leadership Academy to build this coaching skills through coaching excellence, one of the physicians, um, actually we had two, two of the physicians that um, received that coaching, wanted to continue to give back and develop the coaching, their coaching skills. And so they actually took the next step to go through and become ICF credentialed um, coaches to help serve and give back. So they're part of my group of um, ICF coaches I have, uh, and then um, continue to help coach and guide others. And so they were inspired by what they had received and it felt like they had actually achieved what they were trying to accomplish professionally through the coaching. Uh, and so that's exciting. And, um, and that again, yeah. That's like you the ultimate to testament. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Really cool. Thanks for sharing. Um, so Jennifer, at the end of our episode, we invite every guest 
to share a song, to make a contribution and song to an evolving playlist of the Into Me I See podcast, which the link we will provide uh, in the show notes. Um, so I'd invite you to close our conversation today by offering a song, and if you're if you're inspired, to to share why. Well, first, I'd like to just say thank you. Thank you for having me on this podcast. And so everyone that's listening, I hope that uh, there was a few nuggets of wisdom that I was able to share with you today, really around my journey and around coaching uh, and, and just about the passion for developing our next generation of leaders. Um, but the song I would love to share with you and that uh, as Justin asked me this question, um, had a few, but the one that I landed on, Justin, was um, I've had the time of my life. And the reason is, and that for those of you that don't aren't familiar with that song, it comes from my very favorite movie, Dirty Dancing. Uh, and uh, it was written by uh, Bill Medley and, and Jennifer Warren's and popular song. But for me, that song is all about love. And as you think about it and listen to that, um, it reminds me that we also only get one chance at this world. And so, you know, we have our chance to make our mark and we should love life and um, try to be the best version of ourselves every single day. Um, I, I want, I've had the time of my life played at my funeral. And so I want people to remember that we only go around once. And so you got to make the most of it while you're here. And I hope, again, what I've shared with you today, um, coaching helps us to do that. Um, and I think anything that we can do to help ourselves be the best version of ourselves, um, we should just grab it, hold on to it, and uh, keep moving forward. That's beautiful, Jennifer. Nobody puts baby in a corner. No, no one has <laughs> <laughs> That is awesome. I'm so glad um, that you got a chance to join our show today. Thank you, especially on behalf of me personally and RPI and, and all of our listeners. Um, we really appreciate uh, your verse in the song today. Um, and I hope, uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks again for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today and listening to the whole episode. We hope you've enjoyed it. Special thanks goes out to RPI's amazing marketing team, Michaela, Logan, Chris, Paul, and others to come for collaborating on this project and connecting it to the RPI experience. If you think you might wanna come work for RPI or let RPI come work for you, you can find us at rpic.com. That's rogerpeterindigocharlie.com. If you wanna learn more about this show, watch past episodes, or sign up to be a guest, just add forward slash into me I see to that rpic.com URL. We would love to hear from you. Until next time, keep it real, take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Thank you very much.